Slavia, with all its diverse ethnic regions, was held together by a communist strongman, Tito. But with his death and the collapse of the Soviet Union, Yugoslavia has been torn apart by ethnic fighting. The regions of Croatia, Macedonia, Bosnia-Herzegovina have already broken away. But can Yugoslavia's southern province, Kosovo, which is 90% ethnic Albanians, do the same? We're going to turn that question over to Joe Dioguardi. He's a former congressman from Westchester and runs the Albanian-American Civic League. Let's talk about that. Morning. Hello, um, nice to see you. Just a little background. I mean, Yugoslavia has been sort of a hotbed of ethnic strife for years, but as you were saying, we, we just picked up on this story. Most people think the fighting started a year ago. Uh, that's when we began to pay attention to it. Uh, it actually started in the early 80s when the Albanians were seeking independence uh, from the, uh, the Serbs who were trying to dominate Yugoslavia at that time when Tito died. He passed away in 1980. In 1989, after the Berlin Wall crashed, the Albanians were the first ones to throw their Communist Party cards into the bonfire, 700,000. And they're still trying to get out from under the boot of one of the worst dictators that we've seen since Adolf Hitler 50 years ago. And you're talking about Slo uh, President Slobodan uh, Milosevic of, of the Serbian uh, Yugoslavian area. Actually, right. we have a map. Maybe we should call that up and take it's, a look. It's uh, Rup Yugoslavia. As you know, we had the former Yugoslavia. Mm -hmm. uh, four of the republics declared independence, Slovenia, Croatia, Bosnia, and Macedonia, but the Albanians were left behind. We want to just uh, mention right now what you're looking at. The It's a tricolored area that represents present-day Yugoslavia. You can see that the yellow section, which is Serbia, dominates, but Kosovo in the south, in green, is 90% uh, ethnic Albanian, and then Montenegro, also in pink, is another region that isn't part of the uh, direct Serbian mix. See, Americans are not really that good on Eastern European history. I didn't learn it in my uh, grammar school and high school, and we have these strange uh, places like Croatia, Bosnia, Slovenia. Yugoslavia was made up of eight of those places. Kosovo was one of them. Kosovo had an equal vote to Serbia, that very dominant republic mm -hmm. in Tito's Yugoslavia. But in 1989, Mr. Milosevic walked in with tanks and police and took away their parliament, their schools, their hospitals, their judiciary, their police, and he said, this is now part of Serbia. That's the problem. It started 10 years ago at least. Tell us what's happening today. Lots going on. Madeleine Albright there, a number of other diplomatic uh, leaders trying to get some peace in, in that area. So tell us what is happening and what do you hope will happen from Well, this? Lord knows this area needs peace. Uh, well, what's happening right now, uh, sometimes I'm ashamed to be an American, because they're looking for political expedience. They're not doing the right thing. We have a war criminal. The United States House of Representatives passed a resolution last June saying that actually it was the Senate that this man did enough in Bosnia and Kosovo that he should be brought to The Hague and tried as a war criminal. Melissa Peck, right. Yes, uh, Slobodan Milosevic. Then in September, the U.S. House of Representatives did it. Then two months later, the, the European Parliament. Why are we allowing a war criminal to dictate to the United States of America what should happen in an area of vital interest to us? This is the Balkans. You know where Albania is? Albania is just 60 miles from Italy. That's how my father's folks got there from Albania. Believe it or not, in my family, they speak both Albanian and Italian. 500 years ago, when the Ottoman Turks came into this area, many, many Albanians fled to Italy and got asylum in the Kingdom of Naples. Now, you were there recently in Yugoslavia, and I want to talk to you a little bit about that. And Actually, you... I went to France uh, last week and then Albania. They wouldn't let me in Yugoslavia. Uh -huh. what, what is the feeling that people are getting that? What, what will happen in that area? Well. In Austin, we have the Albanian American Civic League. Uh, it's a, an organization that I began with a group of Albanian, uh, Albanian Americans from Montenegro, from Kosovo, from Macedonia. They're all spread out, but they live together in those five jurisdictions and South Serbia. Uh, we are an international lobby. Uh, we try to educate the public and the press. And from time to time, we go to Washington. We are registered, even though we're volunteers. No one gets paid. Uh, we're registered as a lobby so that we can make our case to Congress, to the executive branch, and we've been doing this for 10 years. We've been trying to bring the truth to Washington. Just last year, I testified four times, uh, once in the Senate last May and three times in the House, to try to bring the actual truth, not the propaganda that you're hearing from Slobodan Milosevic. Don't forget, this man still runs a communist regime within Yugoslavia. He's trying to hook back up with the ultranationalists in Russia and Belarus, 
and he is right now trying to dominate the entire region as he did in Bosnia. We waited two years too late in Bosnia and lost 250,000 people. How many Albanians do we have to lose before we do, we do the right thing, which is to strike? We must take this man's military might away from him. Gonna, we gave it to him. We're going to have to cut you right off there, Mr. Diavardi, but that's something we're going to find out in the days to come, whether Certainly this lovely. negotiated peace can work or whether we'll have to call on NATO airstrikes. Thanks for Albanians much. need independence. Good to have you here. Thank you so much. Thank you.